Welcome, Brother Ken, just for a second. Amen. Praise God. I want you to know uh, we spent some time together on Friday, but he was in no kind of trouble. Just because I'm a prosecutor, people always have that. No, we were just loving on each other and what have you. But, um, I, you know, as we always do, most of our conversation is always centered around, you know, what's God saying? And we end up in these areas that really help each other. You know, iron sharpens iron. But the Lord impressed upon my heart because I had a burden for the men of God, pastors all across the country, ministers, preachers, whether they're in the pulpit or not, um, the regular lay born again person, because we have this important thing coming up. And as an intercessor, a lot of times you find yourself in a place where God is just, you pick up on his heartbeat, right? And so I sent out an email about a week ago. And it had to do with this particular issue. And what God did was he allowed me to minister to those that I'm close to, that I love and lead, who are ministers. Most of them are pastors. I'm not. So that they could at least give their people an encouragement that the Lord would have. You know, and this is not something I pondered on. This is just how God released me. And it was basically this. But first I want to say this. My encouragement to you is very simple. Um, in the following very sincere and grave appeal to you, to each of you, to seek our Lord earnestly, and then I'm going to follow it up with a simple antidote, I'm making no assumptions as to how the Lord will direct you as an individual and privately as a Christian to vote. I make no assumptions about that. If I was to share with you how I've already voted early. But for me to stand before you right now and tell you who I voted for in any of the elections would really be inappropriate because I'd be misusing my influence. Now, if you pull me on the side privately or call me at my house or send me an email and you ask me directly, I may share with you a little more. So the Lord dealt with me that way first. But let me say this. We simply should seek the Lord first and then do what he says to each of us is very simple. Scripture teaches and proves that the Lord himself has already decided who shall actually be elected to serve his purposes in dealing with our nation and consequently the nations of this world. Scripture bears that out. He says that promotion doesn't come from the north or the south. It doesn't come from man but it comes from the Lord. Now that's on the big picture. However, our Lord does deserve and he expects his children to earnestly consult with him in order that we may personally, now I'm on that personal one-on-one -on -one level, right? Stay in vertical alignment with him and his will concerning sin and all issues dear to his heart. So please do not assume that I am promoting any party or any candidate. I, Ken Fogg, am promoting that each individual should personally seek our Lord in this election season. And let me say this. I encourage you. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And what does he say? And seek my face. And turn, talking about Ken Farms, if I turn from my wicked ways, then he will hear and heal. That speaks of a remnant, people. So he needs that vertical alignment. That's what that scripture is saying. But let me encourage you to keep before your mind and heart, one, the sanctity of life from the womb to the tomb. Yes, sir. Number two, our freedom to worship freely in this country and to have free religious expression without being chastised or imposed upon or threatened by any form of government. And number three, the sanctity 
of marriage between a man and a woman, biblical marriage, traditional marriage, and natural marriage. Then personally and privately seek the Lord and ask him how he would have you personally to vote. Hear him and simply do what he says to you personally. Let me say this. I make no assumptions. I may have an opinion as to what I think he may direct you. But let me tell you this. I'm reminded of Jeremiah, and that's what we were talking about. It had been prophesied that Israel, because of the judgment of God, the nation he loved, would have to serve 70 years in bondage. Nebuchadnezzar comes in. He takes over. Nebuchadnezzar was not a man of God. He was a heathen. But there was a remnant left in Israel, Pastor Eric, a remnant of Jews. Nebuchadnezzar set up an ungodly man over them for that 70 years, and he directed that remnant to serve this ungodly king. But there was one prophet that heard from God, because all of the leaders naturally says, no, we need to rebuke this. We need to... Throw this chain off of us. But see, God had a bigger picture, and he needed to do what he needed to do. So Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, God said, tell this remnant to stay in place and just bide with what I'm doing. So I make no assumptions as a man of God. I know what he's told me. I've already voted. And that's why you don't want to get into that ism about crossing that line. Tell people to seek God if they're Christians. And do what he says. Now, let me say this in closing. And I'm sitting down my four minutes up. This is just food for thought, y'all. This is an antidote. While walking down the street one day, a senator was tragically hit by a car. And died. Come on over here, Pastor. Come stand by me. I know you want this mic. <laughs> now listen. A senator was tragically hit by a car and he died. His soul arrived in heaven and he was met by St. Peter at the entrance. Welcome to heaven, says St. Peter. Before you settle in, it seems there's a problem. We seldom see a high official around these parts, you see. So we're not sure what to do with you. No problem. Just let me in, says the senator. Well, I'd like to, but I have orders from the higher-ups. What we'll do is have you spend one day in hell and one day in heaven. Then you can choose where to spend eternity. Really? I've made up my mind. I want to be in heaven, says the senator. I'm sorry, but we have to go by the rules. And with that, St. Peter escorted him to the elevator, and he goes down, 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 down to hell. The door opens, and he finds himself in the middle of a green golf course. In the distance is a clubhouse, and standing in front of it are all his friends and other politicians who work with him. Everybody is very happy and, and in evening dress. They run to greet him, shake his hand, and reminisce about the good times they had while getting rich at the expense of people. They played a friendly game of golf. Then they dined on lobster, caviar, and the finest wines and champagne. Also present is Satan who really is a very friendly guy who is having a good time dancing and telling jokes. They all having a good time and that before the senator realized that it was time to go. So everyone gives him a hearty farewell, so on and so forth. So they go to the elevator and they go up, 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 up. And he takes the senator to heaven. The door opens in heaven where St. Peter is waiting for him. Now it's time to visit heaven. So 24 hours passed. And the senator uh, joined a group of souls that were moving from cloud to cloud, playing harps and singing and worshiping. And they were having a good time before he realized the 24 hours had gone. So St. Peter says, now, well, then you spent a day in hell and you've endured. You spent a day in heaven. Now choose your eternity. The senator reflected for a minute and then he said, well, I would never have said it before. I mean, heaven has been delightful, but I think. I would be better off in hell. So St. Peter escorts him down the elevator and he goes down, down, down the hill. Now the doors of the elevator open. He's in the middle of a barren land covered with waste and garbage. 
Brother Ashante. And he sees all his friends dressed in rags, picking up the trash, putting it in black bags as more trash falls to the ground. Then Satan comes over to him and he puts his arm around his shoulders and he says, the senator says to Satan, I, I don't understand. Yesterday I was here and there was a, a golf course in a clubhouse and we ate lobster and caviar, drank champagne, danced and had a great time. Now there's just a wasteland full of garbage and my friend looked miserable, he says. All of the friends I left, they looked miserable down here. Then Satan smiled at him and said, quote, yesterday we were campaigning, but today... You have voted. God bless you today. Seek the Lord. Do what he tells you to do. Amen.